Hey guys, it's Kayla and today I'm here with kind of more chatty casual video. If you watched my 2020 goals and resolutions video, you would know that one of my goals for 2020 is to get in the best shape of my life. It is something that I really slacked on in 2019, so I'm making it a priority this year. And since it's going to be such a priority in my life this year, I also wanted to make more content about health and fitness and share more of that side of my life on YouTube. So I thought what better way to start than talking about my health and fitness journey. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave any comments down below and subscribe to my channel if you are new. Let's just jump right into this. Starting off with eating, kind of elementary school through high school. I've always been really picky and especially as a kid, I was extremely picky. I didn't like really any fruits and vegetables. I ate like the bare minimum that like my family forced me to eat, but I didn't really eat that many. And I feel like that's kind of continued into now. It's kind of hard for me to prioritize eating fruits and veggies because it didn't become ingrained into me as a habit as a kid. I think also side note that I have like a food intolerance issue with some fruits and vegetables, which I think also contributes to the pickiness. From elementary school through high school, I brought my lunch to school some days and then ate at school other days elementary middle school the food at my school was like fairly healthy sometimes it was like a healthy homemade meal and then other days it was like pizza and kfc so kind of all over the place and then in high school my food at school was pretty healthy so i didn't feel bad about eating at school but i do think i bought way too many snacks in high school ate a lot of like cookies chips junk food throughout high school, so that was probably not the best. And when I said I brought my lunch to school, I literally started making my own lunch in like fourth grade because my dad was like, you are too picky, I don't know what to make you, so you gotta make it yourself. And honestly, that probably helps me like learn to be a cook and like know how to make food for myself. So I'm kind of grateful for that, but my eating was just kind of all over the place, especially in high school. I think I definitely had some binge eating tendencies and kind of just ate all over the place. Going into college, freshman year, obviously you have meal plan. It's almost impossible to eat healthy on meal plan. We had a dining hall that had like kind of healthy options, but the food was terrible. So we rarely went, which means I ate a lot of Panda Express, The Habit, just kind of crappy junk food. And I didn't really gain any weight. I stayed about what I came into college with, I, to the best of my knowledge. I think I was around 130 pounds when I started college and like when I finished freshman year, I hadn't really gained any weight. I was around the same, even though I ate terribly. And I think that's because I ate pretty much just as terribly in high school. So it didn't super negatively affect me. In sophomore year, I was really excited to start cooking on my own and make my own food and eat healthier. I really ate healthy this year. I made a lot of healthy meals. I ate a lot more fruits and vegetables than I probably ever have in my life, including now. And I think for the most part that was really good, but there were probably definitely some parts of the year where I was not eating enough foods. My junior year, I lived in my sorority house and we had a chef this year. And this kind of led to my eating being all over the place. Like I said, I was really picky. So it, some meals, it was hard for me to find options that I liked. So then sometimes I would like go out to eat on campus or go to Brian's house to eat. But if I did eat at the house, for the most part we had healthy food my main issue was lunches lunches were a lot of salads and sandwiches which are just two things that i do not like so i definitely struggled to find options to eat for some meals and that kind of led to me going back to snacking a lot in my room because i'd be hungry i would find some chips or something and eat that instead of like whatever healthy option was that was and i think just as a picky person, it's hard to force yourself to eat something you don't like even though you know it's healthy for you. Senior year, I went back to cooking for myself and this led to me making healthier food again. I feel like I ate pretty healthy, I made healthy lunches, Brian and I would make fairly healthy dinners. So I think that was good, but senior year I started eating out a lot because one, I was really busy, like I had work, I had an internship, I had different club obligations. It was just a very, very busy year. So we ate out a lot. And also just like, especially second semester, I wanted to enjoy my remaining time in college. I wanted to go out with friends. We wanted to go out to dinner, stuff like that. So I ate out a lot. Onto fitness. From elementary school through high school, fitness was not really a thing in my life. I played some sports like elementary school through middle school, but none of these I really paid 
played seriously and I stopped playing sports in middle school. I did dance and theater from kindergarten through high school and that was kind of my way to be active. Um, I probably could have been more active but dancing was something that I enjoyed and it did keep me active enough. I think a major problem for me with like figuring out fitness is that I didn't really know how to work out or like how to be fit. Like I said, I didn't really play sports so I didn't have that as an outlet to work out. I feel like also a lot of kids learn how to kind of work out or be fit in PE, but I did not have a traditional PE experience. I went to private Catholic school, kindergarten through high school, so PE was not like an obligation like it is in public school. Elementary school and middle school, I think I had PE like two days a week and we sometimes did running like the pacer test, but never seriously. My goal was always to not be the first one out, but after that I didn't really care because I didn't want to be made fun of if I was the first person out, but after that I was like, whatever, and I didn't like running, so I was not motivated. In high school PE, I literally took one semester. We had a two semester requirement, and my second semester I took dance. So I only took one semester of PE. It was a lot of running and a lot of like planks and sit-ups and basic PE stuff, I feel like, but I hated it. PE was miserable. We played a lot of sports too, and I'm just not good at sports, so overall, not a good time. I think this kind of led to me not knowing how to work out and the only way I kind of thought of working out was running, which I absolutely hated. Like my dad is pretty fit, but he runs to work out and does like some sit-ups and planks and that works for him, but that is like not enjoyable to me in the slightest. I absolutely hate running. I have really bad knees from dance, so running just like does not work for me. And I think going into college, I was just very confused about how to be fit and how to work out now that I was kind of living on my own. Freshman year of college, I did start going to the gym. We live fairly close to the smaller gym on campus and I feel like I did go pretty regularly the entire year. But like I said, I didn't know how to work out. I would walk on the treadmill or like go on the elliptical because that's what I think my roommate did or some of my friends. I also did like planks and sit-ups because again, that's the only way I knew how to work out. So that's just like what I did. And I think it worked freshman year. Like I said, I didn't gain the freshman 15. My sophomore year and junior year is really when I started to figure out fitness and working out. I lived really close to the gym both these years. So I went all the time and I realized that going to the gym and working out was just as much as like an emotional outlet and a mental health outlet as it was a physical outlet. So that was good. I started using weights more in my workout. I don't like do heavy weightlifting, but I incorporated like dumbbells and I started using some of the weight machines. And I mostly did this by watching different videos on Instagram or YouTube to like see how people did workouts. And also I would just watch people at the gym, which I guess is a little creepy, but I would see kind of how they did their workouts or see how they would use machines and then copy it. And I think that's a good way to start if you are completely lost and have no idea what to do in the gym. My senior year of college, I did not work out regularly like I did sophomore and junior year. One, because I was very busy, like I said before, and two, I lived farther from the gym, so it was harder for me to motivate myself to go. I think I still went more often than like most people in college, especially senior year, everyone was so busy, um, but not as much as I had gone the previous two years. And I think it also kind of affected my mental health this year. I was really stressed and overwhelmed like all year. And I feel like if I prioritized working out more, that might've helped it. One positive thing I did senior year fitness wise was I played intramural sports. I played indoor soccer and this was a really good workout for me. Soccer was the one sport I kind of really enjoyed and was good at. I like sprinting. I don't like long distance running. Now kind of like image wise and like how I felt about myself from elementary school through now, um, elementary school, middle school, I never really thought about like my body or if I was like too big or too small. I just like lived comfortably. High school, I think I definitely started noticing that I was not like stick skinny like so many of these girls at my high school who were like supermodel pretty, stick thin, like went to the gym after school and I, I just didn't know what that was. But I also don't think I really compared myself at all in high school. I didn't feel like I was too big or too small. I felt comfortable comfortable in my body and I feel like I was fairly confident in myself for being like a middle school, high school or teenager. I think my sophomore and junior year when I started watching a lot of different fitness Instagrammers and YouTubers was when I started to kind of compare myself more. And I think at one point it was not the best mentally because 
I was working myself too hard at the gym and not eating enough food and at one point I got down I think to 125 pounds and that was not healthy for me. I was working out too hard because I wanted to be this skinny perfect image but I think kind of more my junior year, end of junior year, senior year, I realized that I'm never going to be stick skinny. I have a smaller waist and bigger thighs and that was just always how it was going to be. So I think I've kind of realized more that I can become strong and make my legs stronger and um, work to gain more muscle and that is something I found like confidence and success in and I want to get more toned other like rather than being skinnier if that makes sense. Weight wise my senior year was not great. I slowly just started gaining more and more weight. I had like the senior 15. I feel like that's way more of a thing than freshman 15 is senior 15. By the end of senior year I weighed 140 pounds and that didn't really change over the summer after college because I traveled a lot this summer and didn't really get into a good fitness and health routine. My goal for 2020 is to get in the best shape of my life. Like I said, I want to just feel healthy and confident and not just like feel good in my looks, but feel good in like my energy levels and like how I feel, if that makes sense. Before people come at me, I just wanna say that 140 pounds is still a perfectly normal healthy weight for me to be at. I am 5'4", if that gives you any frame of reference. I'm still in the normal range for BMI, even though BMI is not the best scale. I feel like it does give you a decent range, but I'm on the higher end of the normal BMI. If I gained more weight, I would then be like too high on the BMI scale. And personally, I know my body is comfortable at around 130 pounds. I feel my best, I look my best, I feel confident in myself. When I got down 125 pounds, I was not being healthy. I was overworking myself. It was not it was not maintainable. 130 pounds for me, if I'm working out regularly and I'm eating fairly healthy, that's like the weight I should be at. And so that is kind of my goal to get down now in 2020. At 140 pounds, I know I'm not eating my best. I know I'm not working myself as hard as I can be. And so my goal currently is to get down to 130 pounds. I am currently tracking my calories and that is only because I am trying to lose weight and trying to get down to 130 pounds. Once I'm at 130 pounds, I'm going to try to not track calories. I'm going to try and not weigh myself as regularly, maybe every few weeks or every few months, just to make sure I'm like staying on track. But also once I get down to 130 pounds, I'm going to focus on maintaining where I'm at and also kind of building muscle. I would not be opposed to build more muscle. And if I gain like five pounds after that, I kind of know more that it is muscle gains. I've already been really good about working out and working out hard and like pushing myself at a comfortable level at the gym. I've been fueling my body a lot better. I probably could be eating more fruits and vegetables, but again, it is hard because I am picky and have, I think, food intolerance issues that I want to figure out too. That's a whole separate video. Calories range, if you'd like to know, I'm trying to eat between 1500 and 1600 calories a day. I have eaten like 1400 calories some days, but that's when I'm genuinely not hungry and I don't wanna force feed myself. I'm trying to listen to my body. If I am more hungry some days, then I will eat above 1600 calories. I don't want to deprive myself, but I also want to be hard on myself about like not eating junk food and not eating sweets. If you are eating less than 1400 calories, I think you are doing yourself a great disservice that is not healthy, that is not sustainable, and you are going to do more damage to your body in the long run. You really should be eating 1400 to 1600 calories even if you're trying to lose weight and be in a deficit. I think at the end of the day, I want the message of this video to be that health and fitness is very personal. And even if you watch different fitness Instagrammers and YouTubers, at the end of the day, you need to figure out what works best for your body, try different workouts, figure out what you like. I know a lot of people like Soul Cycle and cycling. That is not for me. I know how to push myself in the gym and I know that I enjoy lifting weights, so that is what I do. Figure out what works best for you fitness-wise, what works best for you health-wise, and push yourself to a healthy degree, but don't over push yourself. I think that is it for this video. I think I got all of my thoughts out. If I didn't, I'm going to be talking about health and fitness more on my channel. If you have any videos that you would like to see, 
on these topics, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new to stick along more on my health and fitness journey, getting back on track with health and fitness in 2020. We're gonna do great things. If you've made it this far, you're like the MVP. See you guys in my next video.